King Charles and the globalists set meeting for September at which they plan how or plot how to accelerate the goals of the UN agenda global dominance program of Agenda 2030 and the complete digitalization of humanity. Of course, we've been talking about this since 1992, the Earth Summit in Rio. I say we, folks like Tom DeWeese and myself and others have been writing and speaking about it. It's finally gone mainstream. This is something many people talk about now. Uh, and so we remember that uh, Prince Charles is the one that was uh, said by Joan Veith years ago to have held a meeting before the Earth Summit in Rio with Maurice Strong. He put it on one of the, the meeting on one of the uh, uh, royal family yachts, according to Joan Veith. And Prince Charles got together a bunch of globalists, including, as I said, Maurice Strong of the UN, the guy who said, isn't the only hope for the industrialized planet that is it the only hope for the, the the planet that the industrialized civilization collapse isn't it our responsibility to bring that about so he put that little meeting together and then they had the earth summit in rio and agenda 21 now called agenda 2030 kicked off joining me now to talk about that including something else i alerted leo to today in our conversation and that is and that's over at worldviewreport.com up at the top of the page somewhere on here here it is uh we have coronation public allegiance oath is tone deaf says British Republican group, they're going to have the folks publicly and verbally proclaiming allegiance to Prince Charles. Joining me on this right now is Leo Holman. Leo, welcome back to the broadcast. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Brandon. Hmm. What, what, what do you make of this oath? Plans to ask the public to pledge their allegiance to the king during the coronation have been branded offensive, tone deaf, and a gesture that holds the people in contempt. That's what's being said by a British Republican group. I mean, Prince Charles is on my short list to be the Antichrist. I'm not kidding you. Well, uh, have you ever read that book by Tim Cohen? Uh, no, I have not. Uh, Antichrist and a Cup of Tea, where he makes a very uh, uh, convincing case for what you just said, mm. that uh, Prince Charles, now King Charles, and this book was written back in 1998, okay? Long time ago. And it uh, predicted that Prince Charles would end up being the Antichrist. Now, I uh, cannot vouch for that, but I will say this. He is the global, global leader right now in marshalling support for the United Nations Agenda 2030 Sustainable Development Goals. Uh, there's 17 of these goals, and if they are realized, it basically puts us in a situation of having a one-world government, uh, which, as you know, and you've all also said many times, Brandon, that one-world government will also have a economic and a religious component to it. And when Prince Charles, now King Charles, talks about uh, the sustainable development goals, he, he often talks in religious nearly almost like a religious type of language. Um, and that's why this, uh, this, this coronation coming up later this week on May the 6th is really something to watch. I mean, we're going Irish... to do a lot of coverage of this. We're going to grab yeah. a lot of the footage. We're going to have you back. We're going to cover a lot of this because he's planning on, ups I think he's going to upset the, the church over there. Uh, he's planning on basically doing a tip of the hat to all the religions of the world. Yes. Right. Uh, Muslims, uh, Hindu, uh, uh, Sikhs, Jewish faith, just about anything but his, his own Christianity, which he, he, he is the king over a supposedly Christian nation, just about every religion except Christianity will, you will see lifted up and exalted and, and paid homage to during this coronation uh, ceremony. Now, about this other thing you mentioned, the uh, uh, homage of the people, they're calling it, where it's going to be a new addition to this ancient coronation ceremony. Uh, where And this article in the Irish Times says that people across the UK and overseas, Show this okay, guy. and overseas will be invited to swear a public oath of allegiance to Charles. I won't be doing that, and I bet you you won't, neither will our audience. No, but just reading that sentence, uh, Brandon, sent chills up my spine uh, because I, I hearkened back immediately to Tim Cohen's book, Antichrist and a Cup of Tea, which I've kind of had in the back of my mind all these years. I never really 
totally bought into it. But when you read something like this, it really does make you wonder. And uh, now he's calling this meeting. He and the other uh, UN sustainable development uh, folks are calling a meeting for September 18th and 19th in New York City, okay, the belly of the beast, the United Nations. And they say that this meeting will mark the beginning. This is a quote from the UN website. This meeting will, quote, mark the beginning of a new phase of accelerated progress toward the sustainable development goals, unquote, uh, from the UN website. And uh, he's also heavily uh, involved with the World Economic Forum, as you know. Uh, if you go to the World Economic Forum website, Brannon, King Charles has his own page on that website. Uh, and there's an article there by him that's titled 10 Actions We Must Take to Drive the Green Recovery. And that's all, again, all about achieving the UN dream of a one world system under uh, a technocracy, sustainable development, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and these 10 actions that he's advocating here are really quite frightening. Uh, number four in particular on his list talks about creating an inter a, a, quote, scorecard where people and businesses will be uh, uh, graded based on how sustainably in compliance they are with the sustainable development goals of UN Agenda 2030. So that to me would entail a, a global police force to sort of uh, uh, grade people and and have an enforcement mechanism once they get these goals in place. So he's really uh, uh, out there with this, Brandon. He is the leader of this movement, uh, often behind the scenes, as you indicated with the uh, Rio meeting where he had people on his yacht kicking off that conference, uh, what, 25, 30 years ago, 25 or so years ago. Uh, he was the one who really ignited this movement, and now he's bringing it full circle to accelerate the movement and get these goals adopted by all 200 or, or 196 nations in the world, uh, that they will all be on the same page. There will be no diversity, as they talk about diversity all the time, but they want none of it. They want everybody on the same page, following the same universal standards, quote unquote. unquote. He talks about those uh, ad nauseum in his 10 actions uh, how everybody needs to be on the same global standards. Mm. Yeah, this is over 30 years ago because that meeting on his yacht was before the Earth Summit, and that was in Rio in 92, and this was before yeah. that, according to Joan Veith's book. I'm going to tie it back to where we started, the United Nations Agenda 2030 Sustainable Development Goals being pushed by the UN, by the World Economic Forum, and, and Prince Charles, among uh, the Vatican as well. Principalities and powers in high places, Brandon, are all pushing the same universal goals, and they're all from the pit of hell. Absolutely. LeoHolman.com. LeoHolman.com. You might.